Hey, what up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Riverboat Rob. Hey, listen, I just got off a Skype call with the legendary swim bait builder, creator of the bull shad, the one, the only Mr. Mike Duca. Check out a little bit of our conversation and you'll know what you have in store for you this Friday when we do a full-blown interview with him live. You guys will be able to comment, ask questions, he will respond to your questions. We will tell him your questions. He will answer your questions. If you're a big swim bait guy, you don't want to miss this. Or or a big swim bait girl, um, you don't want to miss this. Anyways, check out this little uh, clip of me picking Mike's brain a little bit before the interview. And as always, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support. So check out the video. First ones. My actual first bait was the uh, a musky jitterbug. Um, that was my first, uh, my first swim bait per se. My first custom swim bait was the triple child. And, um, you know, back then in the, in the, in the, in the early two thousands, when all this started, all they had was trout based and all they had was swim baits out West, you know, um, according to most people, swim baits don't work here in the East or in the South or anything right. other than in California. They, you know, they say it's just for big fish. While it is for big fish, it's also for small fish as well. Um, I think that's the biggest mis misconception between a lot of different um, uh, people is, you know, hey, my, my fish, that bait's too big, you know, and I go to train shows every day and they say, hey, are you fishing for whales? Are you fishing for sharks? <laughs> uh, that kind of stuff, you know, and it's been a... Uh, uh, I've been taking a boots on the ground approach, you know, and going doing these shows and trying to educate people more and more that, hey, these things work anywhere or any pond USA, um, you know, whether you're in Indiana or Florida or Mississippi or, you know, even for states that are not known for very big fish. Um, so, but, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing how challenging that is because um, you have to get over the fact that a lot of people think a bait like this is too big, but it's what they feed on every day. What we try to mimic in the swim bait world is what the bass actually feed on. You know, threadfin, gizzard, um, you know, any kind of shad, uh, trout. Um, so there's no trickery involved. You know, it, not, a spinner bait doesn't look like a shad. Uh, yeah. A drop shot worm doesn't look like anything we ever fish with. <laughs> right. We're feeding them actual forages that they actually feed on. So really, and there should be no trickery in their head, but um, it's it's more challenging than you would think. And even when I went to the Classic, we've had probably, between Classic and MLF, we probably had 70-something pros by baits from us. And surprisingly, they ask, how are you fishing? <laughs> um so it's it, it goes much deeper than the the the, the new, new new person getting into swim baits. You know, it's it's a lot of confidence um, hurdles for a lot of people. You know, um, and the one thing I learned is you throw it, just throw it, and once you get that first bite, that second bite, that third bite, all the wheels and whistles and stuff start going off in your head, and it leaves you down a rabbit hole like you wouldn't believe. You know, because right reason why they work so well is because nobody throws baits that big you know it's kind of like throwing the a-rig when you when it first came out you know nobody throws a bait like that you know there's a lot of iconic baits out there like stinkos and finesse worms and stuff that'll get bit on pressure fish all the time but i'm talking about big fish you know trying to go after yeah. those bigger fish those big fish don't get smart don't get not big by being stupid so, you know, you have to do something that other anglers don't do every day. You know, it could be changing the angles of your approach, because think about every Lake USA, everybody grabs a bass boat, they throw the right hand on the side of the dock, they throw the front of the dock, and then they throw the left hand side of the dock and they move on. You know, those fish get accustomed to those angles, just like deer get accustomed to you going to your stand every day. Right. You know? So you have to almost hunt these fish like you hunt deer. And, and use your approach differently, not only with baits, but also your boat, your angles of how you're throwing your throwing your lures a lot. So um, those are the biggest things that I've learned, you know, that a lot of people don't understand with, with big baits.
It's funny, Mike, that you mentioned the musky jitterbug, because I just did a video on my page, Riverboat Rob, how the musky jitterbug holds more state records than it's called more state record bass than any lure in history. It currently holds three state records, the musky jitterbug, and it, it used to hold more. And a cu couple of the state records now were were held by the jitterbug before they were broken. So that it's very interesting to know that's how you started throwing the musky jitterbug. I mean, the musky jitterbug just keeps coming into my life over and over again. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's still an effective bait to this day. That's an old, 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 old bait. Um, right. But nobody throws a jitterbug anymore, you know? This guy does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you look at everybody in the USA, there's probably not very many people that have a jitterbug. And if they do have it, they don't throw it. Right. You know? So yeah, it's, uh, like it's, a it's, all about, it's all about throwing things that other people aren't throwing sometimes, right. you know, especially on pressure lakes, you know, on, on, on ponds and stuff where it doesn't get a lot of pressure, private stuff, that could, it could flip those bites like a switch, you know. I used to have access to a seven-acre lake, actually it was an 11-acre lake, and when I first got there, I would literally kill the bass seven eight nine pound fish on an 11 acre lake that i had all of myself pretty much um you know other than you have kids fishing for brim and that kind of stuff and then as time went on it got harder and harder and harder to catch those fish those fish get acclimated after a while especially in a pond like 11 acres you know they're still in there you see them spawning every year um, they didn't go over the spillway or somebody caught them or anything like that. It's just that they get acclimated, you know, you have to, you can't hit, you can't hit these fish every day, you know, uh, and, and, and expect it for, I mean, that's the thing with pond building too, you know, you can't, you get a pond full of fish, you, you, you manage it and all that kind of stuff. If you overfish it, you suffer consequences on not being able to catch them as, as often as you would like. Uh, you just have to get more creative in catching them. See what right. we're kind of in store for for Friday, man. Mike it has the juice, um, and he's a legend. He's like man, the bull shad is legendary. So uh, make sure you tune in Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Facebook. We will ask Mike your questions. Um, and as always, I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Until next time, I will see you. Peace.